Today we have a bevy of news for you guys, three really big stories, and then a ton of release dates and updates on games already known, or even games not known that now have release dates. I don't, I'm really excited about all of this stuff. I don't want to waste too much of your time, so we're going to hop right in after I remind you that we are on our road to 150,000 subscribers, so if you want to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring a -ling that ding -a -ling on the bell icon so, hey, we can uh, we notify you of every video we upload, that would be greatly appreciated. But without further ado, let's jump right into our very first story, and this deals with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, normally when this comes up, we're talking DLC, we're talking something crazy, but today we're actually talking about concept art that was released by C-Deck today. And what's really interesting about this concept art is it's just the one image that really stands out to me. There's a, there's like a handful of them, but I'm going to ignore the other handful, but I will put a link down in the description if you would like to check those out. But we're going to focus on this one image because it shows a gorgeous scene that never really fully manifests that well in the actual game it just showed their ambition may have exceeded their i don't know if it's their capabilities or their execution or maybe just the switch can't do this you know that's a common thought all the time the switch isn't that powerful or whatever but it does show that visually they have an idea and a concept of something that they haven't really fully realized in the series yet and it does show that there's likely a, to be a lot of visual improvements especially on the next generation switch in terms terms of just the ambition of what they want to do with Pokemon visually, especially the environments. Obviously, we know the Pokemon are all simple designs, but yeah, it'll be quite interesting to see what they do. And hopefully that this concept art maybe gives us an idea that there's somewhere else they'd like to go from a visual perspective, and they just quite haven't gotten there yet. Now that we're done with that, we're going to move into a new section uh, that we're going to call Quick Hits because it's a bunch of news that we're going to rattle through super quickly, but it's all very, very notable. So Turok 3 is coming to Nintendo Switch and other platforms this November. Whole bunch of changes to it. You guys are seeing clips of it right now. It looks utterly fantastic. I played a ton of Turok 3 back in the day. Really glad to see this coming to Nintendo Switch this November. We don't have an exact day yet, though. Steam World Build, not to be confused with Steam World Dig, although it's the same IP is coming to switch this December 1st and it does look utterly incredible you're building stuff you're building houses and villages and it, it just looks really really good and I always love the steam world art direction next up we have Star Wars Dark Forces remaster was announced for Nintendo switch but we don't have a release date on this yet they did say that they will give us a release date in the future Okay, I mean, duh, <laughs> kind of obvious if you're not giving it to us now, it'll be in the future, but I don't know, it looks pretty solid, they redid some of the visuals, obviously still maintaining that older style, I'll admit, this is one of those Star Wars games from my childhood I didn't actually play, so if some of you play Dark Forces, let me know how good this game is, and if I should check it out. Next up, we do have an update for Sonic Frontiers. This was announced at Gamescom, opening night live. The Final Horizon free update was announced, and it does drop next month. And what's really interesting on this, by the way, September 28th, we do have a date on this. It features a brand new story and the ability to play as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy in what they are calling a climatic free update. So whether this is the last update coming or the climax of the story, I, I don't know, but... Anyways, I love Sonic Frontiers, so it's really nice to see a free update coming. Not to be outdone, Sonic Superstars has some updates as well. It's arriving October 17th, which is three days before Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2. Also, the original design for Sonic will be playable. And we're not just saying like, oh, you know, Sonic on, Sonic on the Sega Genesis. No, no, we're talking about this rabbit-looking weird thing. I don't know. It's playable in the game as a character. Pretty interesting. Maybe it's just a skin. We'll have to wait and see. Next up, we do have another date for something that's not a game, but it's game-related, and Tears of the Kingdom is likely to be involved, and that, of course, is the Game Awards. It was announced for December 7th. We're not going to dive too deep into the Game Awards now. We'll wait until they have all their nominees and their categories and all of that, but it's coming back, and yeah, Tears of the Kingdom is probably up for Game of the Year, so that's going to be one to pay attention to. Next up, we have the Metal Gear Collection Volume 1 on Switch has gotten some tech Detail updates confirmed, and man, people are not happy about this. So it's 720p in handheld, 1080p on, you know, docked. That's fine, but it's 30 FPS, and only on Switch is at 30 FPS. And what makes people really mad about this is this isn't a remaster. This isn't anything fancy that they're doing. It is a collection of old Metal Gear games. And on old systems like the PlayStation 2, the games were 60 FPS. 
Why they're not 60 FPS on Switch makes no sense to anyone, but they're 60 FPS on all of the other platforms. Really feels like they just didn't put any effort into the Switch ports at this time. I don't know. It's why people are mad. It doesn't make any sense. These are not new games. They're old games. Whatever. Next up, last but not least, Switch does remain the second best-selling console for the month of July in North America. Reportedly, its unit sales were pretty close to PlayStation 5 and well ahead of the Xbox Series. There's nothing notable for game sales really for the month of July beyond Remnant 2 overall being the best-selling game in July. And of course, we're just talking about North American sales here. So Switch is still selling pretty well, but obviously it's in a decline. It is down year over year for the month of July. So that's going to do it for our quick hit section. Let's get into our next big story. And this deals with Denuvo. <laughs> oh, you know, gamers' favorite DRM to prevent piracy. Oh boy, you already know that this is going to be a rough a, a rough one, right? It's it, This is going to be tough to talk about. So we're here over on the official website for Denuvo, where it says Project Renew Empower, and it says Denuvo by Erdato, Erd Erd I don't know, I can't pronounce their name, now registered as an authorized Nintendo Switch middleware. Game developers and publishers can now access the video game protection software in the middleware section of the Nintendo Developers Portal. So Denuvo, the global leader in providing security solutions for video games on desktop, console, and mobile platforms, is pleased to announce its protection technologies are now available on the Nintendo Developer Porter at Portal as authorized by Nintendo Switch Middleware. The Nintendo Developer Portal offers documentation tools and other useful materials. We're not going to go through this whole announcement. We're just going to get to what this, the intent of Denuvo is on Nintendo Switch, if you can't even figure that out. So it says... That Denuvo is the first security partner added to the portal where developers are now able to access Nintendo Switch emulator protection, a revolutionary technology to protect games launching on Nintendo Switch from piracy. Even if a game is protected against piracy on its PC version, the version released on Nintendo Switch can be emulated from day one and played on PC therefore bypassing the strong protections offered on the PC version. This can happen with any of the numerous games available on Switch. We just saw it happen with Tears of the Kingdom and Pikmin 4. By blocking unauthorized emulations on PC, studios are able to increase their revenue during the game launch window, which is the most important period for monetization. Well, for most games. Nintendo has... Uh, evergreen status with their games. Anyways, the Nintendo Switch emulator protection will ensure that anyone wishing to play the game has to buy a legitimate copy. As with all other Denuvo solutions, the technology integrates seamlessly into the build tool chain with no impact on gaming performance. I feel like they say this all the time. Then we later find out it actually does impact performance. Anyways, it then allows for the insertion of checks into the code, which blocks gameplay on emulators. As gamers, we know firsthand how piracy negatively affects the gaming industry. Most gamers don't really complain that much about it, but outside of leaks, you know, leaking story details and stuff. And we're thrilled to be part of the Nintendo Developer Portal so that we can provide the latest technology to help fight this issue for Nintendo Switch players and developers, says the CEO. So that's that's cool, and it is true Nintendo's had a big issue with this stuff. But I want to go to this art article on this website I've actually never been to says make use of, and they go a little bit into what Denuvo is and why do gamers hate it, because this is obviously... Something that, if you don't know the history of Denuvo as Nintendo Switch players, it's good to know why gamers really don't like it. And it's got nothing to do with preventing you from pirating games. It has to actually do with hurting legit consumers while people who pirate games continue to pirate them pretty much without issue. Uh, so this goes into you know popular things like competitive multiplayer. So what is DRM and anti-cheat software? When it comes to video games, cheats have always been around from spawning tons of weapons in Grand Theft Auto to seeing through walls while hacking FPS games. Like Counter-Strike and Call of Duty, video game cheats allow players to gain an unfair advantage by exploiting the game's core mechanics. An anti-cheat tool is a piece of software integrated into the game to control cheating by detecting cheaters. Now, this is not really what we're worried about right now. We're actually worried about piracy. But we'll get to that in a moment. Anti-cheat software either works from the user mode or the kernel mode. DRM, or digital rights management, software, on the other hand, deals primarily with protecting the game's code and DLLs from being hooked, hijacked, or tampered with in any way, ensuring integrity in the game code and preventing piracy. So what does Denuvo do? Denuvo is primarily a DRM software. Additionally, it's an anti-cheat solution. Stops people from cracking and pirating games and also identifies and bans cheaters in multiplayer games. The Numa is most famous for, or in the video game circle, infamous for its key feature, 
anti-tamper protection. When implemented as DRM, it employs techniques like obfuscation and anti-debugging implementations, virtualization, and encryption on the video game's core files to fortress the video game from being reverse engineered and cracked by video game piracy groups. It also implements online activation and hardware signing to prevent unauthorized access to the game. And this has become a very controversial point in the Denuvo process that has hurt legit consumers. Denuvo is an anti-cheat and an equally tough nut to crack. We're not going to worry about the anti-cheat stuff. We're going to go down here and we're going to go to why do some people hate Denuvo? Denuvo anti-cheat uses kernel level drivers to function. So if someone manages to exploit it to gain access to the kernel, they can access almost everything stored on your computer. So there's that. Uh, it's not very good at having security for your whole thing, but but there's other things. Almost all games that are protected by the new anti-tamper suffer from increased loading times, lower frame rates, and other performance issues. So even though it claims it has no hit to performance, games using de novo have longer load times, lower frame rates, and often resolution issues. Yes, folks, de novo has shown an impact on performance despite their claims. It gets worse. Denuvo can leave developers with a hefty bill, so it's not always good for developers as well because it is a uh, service that you must pay to use. Uh, and yeah, it, it notes that video game anti-cheats and DRM are obviously here to stay. One thing it's not noting in here, and I can say this based on my personal experience dealing with uh, Denuvo, is that sometimes you can't even access your video game if you don't have an online connection. Now, I don't know they're going to use this technique on Nintendo Switch since it's a portable system that isn't always meant to have an internet connection, but it is notable on PC. Yeah, sometimes you just can't play your game. Well, hack people who are playing a hacked version of the game that removed the Novo are not only seeing better performance, they're also able to play it offline. So I'm, it's not necessarily been a good thing in the industry seen by most gamers, but it is something that we do uh, have to deal with. And now it's coming to Nintendo Switch. Here's hoping they somehow made it better. I don't know that they can, but let's hope. Uh, we need to get to our next story here, and we're going to end with a happier story, or at least some sort of a positive note here, talking about a next-generation Nintendo Switch game from Nintendo this time, a first-party next-generation game. That's right, we actually have news on something. What is it? The next Xenoblade game. That's right, Xenoblade would likely be something vastly different, says the series director, and we're getting this news over on Nintendo Everything. So, according to Xenoblade Chronicles director Tetsuya Takahashi, assuming that we see another entry in the series, which it's been growing, so I assume we will. In fact, they released two of them plus the Definitive Edition on Switch. That's three games. Just didn't get X. I don't know what's up with that. Anyways, a message from him was included in a recently released Xenoblade Chronicles 3 soundtrack. So this is official stuff. Here's what the translation reads. Rather than playing on defense, going on the offense, change rather than maintain. This is a stance I have continued to hold for 30 years. If there is another Xenoblade, which there clearly will be because it sells well, it will likely be something vastly different from what came before. In style and in music, I would like to make my next goal something that will betray everyone's expectations in a good way. Of course, this leads it to you guys to figure out what sort of experimentation is actually going to be happening with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm the biggest Xenoblade, you know, aficionado and know everything about it despite dabbling in all the games. But, man, it is exciting to think that, you know what, even with Xenoblade, they think there's ways they can innovate and, you know, just surprise our expectations in the future. And obviously the next Xenoblade game since the last one just came out this year, believe it or not, well, at least the DLC, right? Uh, yeah, we're, we're obviously going to see this next one on the next generation of hardware. And I can't wait to see what Monolith Soft can do with that kind of power. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a long road to get to the end of this video. Be sure you turn into our podcast tonight, or if you're watching this tomorrow, go back and watch our podcast that happened at 8 p.m. Central Time uh, on the what, 26th or whatever day it is, the 23rd, sorry, 23rd. And you know what? Uh, we got Switch Force on there. We got Andres Restart, Nick with No K, Flam is back. We got Eric back on the show. It's going to be good times. So uh, hopefully you guys go check that out as we talk about Charles Martinet's retirement and more. We have actually quite a bit to talk about. Catch you guys in the next video.